Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Elden Ring. We are finally going to start Laindell, the Royal Capital, and for this we have Little Crushy and Big Crushy. Oh, and I, I appear to be overburdened. What a strange coincidence this happened around the time I equipped Big Crushy. Oh well, it's a mystery nobody can solve. We'll send this right back down. I don't think there's a reason I'll ever need to do that again, but at this point, it's just force of habit. Just good practice. And when we turn around and head out the door of what it looks like a chapel, we can finally see it. We're here. We've come so far and we're finally this close. If you look carefully up ahead, you can see the exact spot where we are going to enter the Erd Tree. And get a small glimpse of things to come through here. First, we're going to chat with two people. Melina and Bach. Our boy Bach. Yep, there he is. My utmost thanks for bringing me to the base of the Erd Tree. Here, I can govern my own movement, and thus, the accord is fulfilled. I shall depart to ascertain the purpose I was given. Farewell. I shall leave Torrent, and the power to turn runes into strength. Here. With you, I wish you luck in realizing your ambition. You have fought long and hard. I have no doubt you will become Elden Lord. May you take the throne. So here we part ways. That'll trigger the first time you rest at a bonfire in the capital. And now... We'll see what dear Bach has to say. The seamster, at your service, ready to make adjustments to your... My lord, did you see it? The... the herd tree. I... Oh, I don't really have the words for this. But I was so... so dazzled, I felt something stir in my breast. The herd tree is waiting for you, my lord. I know it, I do. I feel it in my bones. Oh, please, take the throne of Elden Lord. Going already, my lord. Please, do be safe on your journeys. Don't worry, Bach. Soon I'll take the throne, then dissolve, dissolve the monarchy, monarchy and the return power to, to the people. Because your destiny to be free. Oh, hell yes. Finally, we get a full view of this place the grandeur of it the complexity of it and we get a better look at our destination which is up there we can get the full layout of this labyrinthine dungeon and who is this massive petrified dragon that is Grand Sax, who once attacked the capital and was ultimately felled. We'll learn more about him here. Oh, it's so sweeping. And the Doot Doot Lads. <laughs> These enemies have horns that blow bubbles at you. Yeah, play that solo. Uh-oh. Okay, so this is the thing that the Earth Tree avatars get. Uh, I'm not sure if I love that. It's definitely not as good as theirs. Okay, and this is the medium-sized version. Oh, I love this moveset. That's the R2 on it. Are you... Oh my god! I can't believe it. I can't believe it. 
That, mmm, oh my god. Hold on. Long golden horn of the Oracle Envoy is profoundly weighty. Its blows are sure to be felt, originally an instrument, but one that cannot be sounded by a mere human, or perhaps it's too early to sound the call. Skill, bubble shower. It blows bubbles. Of course it does. There are three versions of that weapon, small, medium, and large. We've seen the small ones, that's the only medium one we've seen so far, and immediately got it to drop. Large ones, I think it'll be a lot longer till we see that. Also, I'm trying to be careful up here because we have the deadly, deadly pages. Please, please, please. Thank you. Crushes them. That's very nice. No bubbles. That's not good. Well, as long as the page is dead, there's nothing to really worry about. Except the fact that the bubbles can spawn kind of through geometry. And on top of you. Directly. Constantly. <laughs> So the reason I freaked out about getting that drop is because I did a playthrough on my other character in one of his New Game Plus runs because I really wanted a bubble build. Specifically centered around the medium version of the horn. I think that one is the overall best, and I think it's its version of the bubble blast <laughs> is ultimately the best. But the drop rate is... Uh-oh. There we go. There we go. Very good. The drop rate's abysmal. It's terrible. The thing that I love about it is you blow a load of bubbles, not just one big one or one small one that spawns wherever it pleases. It's a shotgun. It's a short frontal cone where each individual bubble does its own damage and hit stun. It is a shotgun. If you use this against large enemies at point-blank range, you'll stagger them almost instantly. Especially if you buff it. Like, for instance, you can get the head wrap that those envoys wear, and it boosts bubble incantations and other sources of damage from bubbles like that. It does work on the weapon art. And I think it also scales with faith, and there are some other ways to buff the stagger, like with the, um... Uh, the, the Physic Flask tier that makes you do more stagger damage is really good. It's... I thought it was just gonna be, a, like, a fun joke build, and then I just started tearing through every boss in my pack? Like, it was nothing? It's so fun. But that's gonna be for another time. Like, perhaps after we clear this mega dungeon... I was flipping out because I farmed this so f for so long in a later game area in my other character, and it took hours to get that to drop. Oh, the desire sensor strikes again. I think clearly what the game is telling me is my next build after the boss of this dungeon needs to be the bubble mode, right? I need to go bubble mode. Like, oh, another page. Woo. That was close. These are, pound for pound, probably the most stress-provoking, dangerous enemies in the game outside of... Uh, maybe the IRA birds who mistook me for being an English royalist? You know, 2024 is right around the corner. I'm... I'm eagerly looking forward to seeing if Apollo's dodgeball ricocheted off of every person who posted that screenshot of data from TNG talking about the Irish reunification of 2024 like a prophecy-inducing pinball. Time will tell! As for right now, we've got a seedbed curse, which is an important item for a questline we've yet to really start. Curse grown on a corpse killed and defiled by the Dung Eater, a tender pox afflicted with omen horns. The Dung Eater cultivates the seedbed curse on corpses. By doing so, he prevents dead souls returning to the Erd Tree, leaving them forever cursed, one of the most loathsome things found in all the lands between. 
found uh, with on top of a, a bloody cloth on his waist, right over his groin. They don't call him the beloved dung eater. Anyway, we'll return that to him one day. There's one room with with these pages that is pretty stressful coming up. Uh, luckily, there are a couple of ways you can you can manage it to make it easier on yourself. Uh, it's right through here, actually. It's this room on the left. But if you're observant, you can just crash through these barrels. It opens up a different hallway leading outside. Uh, and it lets you skip the room altogether, or it lets you come at it from a different angle from the other doorway. Which I'm going to do after I clear some things out, because I want to be able to fight them and drag the fight outside as much as necessary. Because it's a page and two or three perfumers who are already kind of troublesome zoners without having to worry about, like, how lethal the pages are on top of that. And it's like, if you try to deal with the perfum perfumers first... Fine. Yeah, okay, he's just... It's just a guy throwing a pot. Nothing to worry about. Uh... I lost my train of thought. Either way, that gives us a lot of room to fight and kite backwards. Of course, that's also an alley with a dead end. So I'm going to clear this other side wing out before we go to the left into that room. I think there's a dog around. No, no. I thought a dog was going to drop down. And then after we get out here where this path is leading, Landell's really going to open up. I think this this dungeon is... Oh, that was so good. Low profiled and knocked him up. Landell is enormous. And I almost assuredly will miss something on the first pass. We'll actually get back to this thought just a second. I want to make sure this goes right. Okay, there are the pages. They're all quite spread out. So I want to go in. I want to kill one really fast. That's not going to work out too well. Backup plan. Kill him as he's rounded the corner. The others are too slow to catch up. The perfumers kind of take their time. And this one didn't even wake up at all. So this room went about as well as it possibly could have. It's way easier, I think, coming at it from that direction than the other way around. So, Landell, this is a mega dungeon. Having done it a bunch of times now, it doesn't confuse me as much, but it did take me a good three or four goes through here before everything really clicked and made sense to me. We're now coming out onto the main street. Once you get a little bit closer to that overturned cart, Bird Tree Avatar out of the sky like Poochie in reverse. To put... Oop, that was greedy! That was also quite greedy. Let's be careful. Let's be careful. Let's be, careful. Let's be more careful. Hold on. I didn't think I would have to give respect and pay attention to I don't know how, but okay, we take that. This enemy, but here we are. Okay, that that did an admirable enough job mitigating the scary factor of that attack. Okay. So now that we have this I should never talk. Just never say anything. <laughs> to put in perspective how big this dungeon is, uh, Landell has a sub-dungeon in it. 
and the sub dungeon has its own sub sub dungeon. There are entire sections of this place that I didn't even discover my first go through. Like multiple big ones. At first, it starts out feeling a little linear. Then you get to this bonfire and everything just blooms like flower petals growing out in every direction. So we could continue down there. Instead, we are gonna come back out here onto the street, take a left, go opposite the main doors, opposite the way the earth tree is, to the end of the road. I think my main issue with Lingdell is that the critical path through here is not actually very intuitive. And combined with how large and maze-like it is, it's very easy to get lost without having a clue where you're actually going to get to where you need to be. Which I think is fine for things in the open world, particularly like optional things, but for dungeon design, I, I want a little more signposting about what the path to the end is. I realized, like, the Erd Tree... Ooh, this is... Nah, this is fine. This is such a choke point. This is very nasty for them. Uh, the Erd Tree being, like, the biggest neon sign conceivable makes that a little bit ironic, I realize, but more specifically, where in the city to go to even get up to that very base where you're supposed to be. It's very winding and confusing at times. But also... Big and engrossing. And full of really cool stuff. And also, too many ulcerated tree spirits, I'll just get that out of the way now. <laughs> and for this little side alley excursion, we finally find the impact. Now we can finally finish my finally finish following the main road uh, all the way to the other end where it leads to massive hulking double doors, which unlike the ones at the opposite end of the city, the ones up the stairs that lead towards the Erd Tree, this doesn't require anything special to open. We can just force them open with our bare hands. It leads to a part of the city that's been deserted. And it looks like there's been a sandstorm. I just tore through here and nothing was ever salvaged or rebuilt. Like a whole district of the city was just lost. And you wonder how can this happen in the in the the royal capital of the Golden Order? There's no facade of greatness here. Alternatively, the ravages of the shattering of the, the, the Elden Ring being broken are felt even this close to the, the base of the Golden Order's power. Even they cannot fully shield themselves from the consequences of what's happening. Although, the way they have this all sealed off... Oh god, gotcha, I'm scared by the time of day transition. It looks like they're just trying to wash their hands of a disaster and pretend this whole thing doesn't exist. I don't know, it's just a bit of environmental storytelling here that I'd never really picked up on. It really is just shambolic here. Oh, hey! Haven't fought one of these things in Morn Castle. Leonine Mist. Ooh, 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 giants thrust or giant hunt. MVP stuff. And look who he was right by. Pay attention. Friendly dog. Friendly dog. 
I don't know why he's here, but he's completely friendly. I love secrets like this. Just a small, cute little thing. I can't remember if there's a gesture to pet. And I don't feel like stopping to check. But if you want to, and there is. Oh, hey. That was fast. The sun came out again. Guess it was just a weather thing. Rather in time of day transition. Still, that happens in such a jarring way sometimes. And then also there's this whole upper part. Back part. With some very feisty enemies who are about to get giant hunted. I think this is a very underrated Ash of War. Staggers the hell out of enemies. It sends a lot of them flying. Uh, it's very good for catching flying enemies or enemies with weird hitboxes that dangle above you. Uh, it's really good for hitting bosses in the face, especially ones that are, like, taller than you. Now we'll just check out the other end. There, that's another Leonine. And, oh yeah. This is even more problematic now. Because remember from Morn Castle, the flying ones, they're crossbows, they're repeating crossbows. Luckily, hey, look how well Giant Hunt performs against flying enemies. There's also perfumers there, uh oh. Oh no! Does leave you open for a little bit. Uh oh! Death? No. Survival. Ooh. There we are. God, that's nice. Especially once you get used to it. The Leonine Misbegotten hasn't figured out how to get down here. That's okay. We'll forgive him. The perfumer, too. I didn't realize there was a second perfumer. Thank you, tree. Sometimes you need the trees to be on your side. You need the forest to be your ally. Uh-oh. Okay, he made it down. The ants can no longer save me. This is okay, he's... Well, he gave up on violence for a little bit. Just long enough. I need to really go after the rest of them. They're not gonna bother me. Ooh, Exalted Flesh. That is a damage buff. Still in combat with something because I can't teleport. Wonder what that's about. Page hasn't, or not the page, the perfumer hasn't laid off me yet. Uh, there is also, while we're coming back up the main street, there's also this other side path we could have taken on the way to the double doors, and it's got, by the fountain, across from it, another crucible knight, who we can thankfully, for the time being, sneak past. By sneaking past him, we make our way to an elevator, and this elevator is one of our first shortcuts. This will lead up to a door, and the door will lead back out to this spot by the, firm, the first bonfire. So now the back part of Dell and the first part are linked up. Now we'll take the elevator back down and actually fight the Crucible Knight. I think there is a worthwhile reward for doing so, so we're not just gonna take the coward's way out. They're gonna buff up, though. I'm going in loaded for bear. I mean, we could just take the item and run, but 
Ah, where's the fun in that? Oh my god, you stand no chance! Two hits? Two hits to stagger, three hits to get to half health. No way. Worry that was just a little too far away. Good. Get out of here. No, you need to drop. Oh, all, that's all that is. Okay. That's fine, I guess. That'll come in handy at some point. What matters is we annihilated the Pride of the Crucible Knights. <laughs> Oh, I, can't, I couldn't make this out too well before. It's growing out of a tree again. We've seen similar statues to that before, haven't we? And then across from that, there's also another elevator. This one, instead of going up, will take us down. And this goes deeper into the town part of the castle. leap around the rooftops, we can get into other districts that way, uh, or we can go down to the ground floor, and we'll end up somewhere near the cemetery. Just as soon as I find something. Black bow. And there's the cemetery down there, so we'll fall into the dead center of it. Yeah, and all of our friends will come back to life to greet us. It is time for a party. They're inviting us to do the mash. What a bunch of friendly liches. Liches and spirits and haunts and geists and so forth. Time for a spooky, scary skeleton party. From there, or nothing in this alley, I think. Just a dead end. Whoop. Get out of the way, please. They're nothing but bones, so it's very easy to knock them out of the way just by rolling into them. Uh, this room has a ton of these guys throwing lightning pots, so you have to get through here pretty quick and get up to them. Clear them out, and then you can survey the room more leisurely. Oh, and remember they'll get back up if you don't destroy the flame. They're not like uh, the Dark Souls skeletons animated by liches, where you either have to take the lich out, or or the necromancer, I mean, or the um, or use the less weapon or something. Oops. They can be a little bit troublesome just, in, just with their sheer numbers. But, if you can just take multiple out with one swing, one or two swings. It's like reaping wheat. It's time to check this now. Another stone sword key. And now we can get up here without being assailed by lightning constantly. This gets us back to this bonfire. So everything has now connected around. As much as everything forked around, we've joined up all the paths that we've seen so far. And now... I'm gonna go this way and oh I know it's out here across the bridge we couldn't go we can go down into the canals and also down deeper into the sewers and one of the sub dungeons we 
beneath Lanedell, there's a very large subzone that includes a multi-floor pipe maze. Uh, it's like a... It's like the big sibling of Dark Souls is the depths. And oh, would you look at that! Another ulcerated tree spirit. Lovely. And thus marks the end of another chapter in the Book of Ulcerated Tree Spirits. There are 32 chapters left. <laughs> As a conservative estimate. I don't know, I'm just throwing that number out of my ass, but it sounds right. It feels right. <laughs> There's a lot of them. If I remember, I'll look up how many there actually are and put it on screen. This way, I have to look out for the night, and then is there anything that's gonna ambush me? I can't remember. I kind of feel like it. You know, it's just this nasty little Lindell knight here, who I once forgot about and got backstabbed by as I left the room once. Giant Hunt really takes them out. Really puts working in this dungeon, considering what you're up against most of the time which are very cracked out knights with dangerous lightning powers who can be formidable once you let them get going. But if you just never do that, well, then you're cooking. Let me just make, let me just make a pit stop up here real quick, grab the bonfire in the little chapel, and then, uh, let me grab get these in a second. I'll deal with the Omen Killer first. Oh! He ch Whoop. That's the Capra Demon special. He challenged me and won. Challenged my giant's hunt and stuffed it. How about now? Yeah, he didn't like the second one. Omen Smirk Mask. So Lanedell is a pretty fitting place to find these. There's the smirking face of an elder twisting a wicked delight. This visage is carved in the image of evil spirits that haunt the omen in their nightmares. Yeah, this is a fitting place to find one, given who enslaved the omen in the first place. Lionel's gear, as well as the deathbed dress, Thea's dress. Finding them both together here in the capital tells us something about their relationship. Round iron armor with a banner extending from its back, worn by Lionel the Lionhearted. When the chivalrous, dauntless knight met Thea, who had been driven from her home, he declared himself to be her father. Extremely thin and sheer white dress worn by the deathbed companion as she embraces the dead. Slowly replenishes the HP of nearby allies, but not that of the wearer. The touch of the fabric, the fabric is exceedingly soft, so as not to harm even the most withered corpse, while still sharing her warmth. Lionel the Lionhearted, the perennial helper by the way, is one of the uh, warriors who helped us with Radon. So Thea certainly followed the helpers. Uh, now we can take a dip into the canal. Just not sure which side I want to tackle first. There are the rats here. There are also a lot of hand spiders coming up. Saw so one of them clinging to the wall behind us, which I... If I had remembered it the, in the moment, I would have jumped and taken it out. But... I don't think it will be too much of a problem. Guilty Hood. Garb of those accused of lesser crimes indicated by the collar of sharpened thorns. I thought these two were going to come after me. Oh, well. Instead, I'll get my track and field practice in and leave them in the dust behind me. I'm 
gonna try as hard as I can in this section coming up to fight as few things as I can. I just kind of want to run it to the end of this. Catch the gargoyle. Deal with that before anything catches up with me. Outrun the consequences of my actions. And just grab whatever's down in the pit. Specifically, uh, the Urge Tree Dagger. Uh, I may have messed up. I just don't want to get grabbed. That's all I'm trying to avoid with this. Okay, now we're good. And this isn't even anything important as far as I know. No, the least important of all. The dried livers. I never use those. Grass crest engraved upon his blade, carried by the Air Tree Royalty for self-defense in times of peace. Though forged to a high standard, the weapon is difficult to wield. Attack power also scales with faith. Of course it does. Everything scales with faith in this. A large number of weapons scale with faith. And at the very top, this is yet another way we can we can get to the critical path of the dungeon, which is up this dragon's stone scales, up its wings. These knights, by the way, they are snipers. Don't let them fire from you from down a long hallway or alleyway. If they pull their bows out, they're gonna do some disgusting things with it. This is no problem. And something really cool is going to take shape once we get to the other end of this room. Through that door. Because... Just checking around. Yeah, that's why. Oh, he still got me. Still did quite a bit of damage, too. Through here is... That second bonfire from earlier. We've looped back here again. And found a second way that we got to the critical path. We could have gone here directly uh, down the stairs. Instead, we took a long way around through the lower city and through the canals and eventually wound up here anyway. So it's just that the first time I got here, it didn't really click to me that I needed to scale the scales. It becomes pretty intuitive once you hop on them though. This is such a cool ascent, too. Gives you an awesome perspective down on the city. Like, what a cool vantage point. And you have to make a little jump here, and you're good to go. We now have the next chunk of Lingdell. I don't even want to say the second half. I don't think we're that far in yet. Maybe the first, the, maybe the next third of it. <laughs> yeah, I'd say we're about a third of the way done to the dungeon. Or we will be momentarily once we reach the very next bonfire up ahead. You can even see it glowing uh, through the doorway. And you can see this great spear that's piercing Grand Sacks. No, no. Come on. You're gonna be a hero? You? I don't think so. It wasn't for him. He was not the main character. He was not the hero. He was not the villain. He was not even an important side character, sadly. And that's where we will call it for today, everyone. We have so much of Langdell left, and I cannot wait to show you more of it. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, everyone.